When we go to buy a new camera, we're usually bombarded with a ton of headline grabbing features such as megapixels, focus points, creative filters, frames per second, you name it. However, a lot of these headline grabbing features are not necessarily the best ones. So in this video, I wanna go through five camera features that have added the most value to me and my photography. This feature is quite underrated and on this list, certainly not the most used one. However, it's very important because it can sometimes make the difference between being able to take a photo and walking away empty handed. In a normal camera, there is a shutter mechanism which physically moves up and down when you take a photo. That movement creates a noise, which is also known as the shutter sound. On some cameras like the Fuji X-T4, the shutter is actually quite quiet. However, on other cameras that I've used, the shutter can be very loud and very audible, even in not so quiet situations. A silent shutter effectively turns your camera into a mobile phone and takes a photo without using the shutter mechanism, therefore without making any sound at all. What this means is that you can now take photos without disturbing others around you and without attracting unnecessary attention to yourself. Now, there are some downsides. The first one is you can get what's called a rolling shutter, which is effectively if you take a photo of something that's moving fast within your scene or if you move the camera quite quickly, then straight lines are not straight, they are actually slightly tilted to one side. From my understanding, it's something to do with how the pixels are kind of red from left to right or right to left, therefore causing that if the pixels are not red quickly enough. The other downside is that under certain fluorescent lighting conditions, you can get very weird color casts affecting all or part of the image, which in post are almost impossible to remove or mask. However, both of these scenarios are quite rare. And now that you know the limitations, you can just work around them. If you're shooting in any priority mode, such as aperture or shutter priority, or even in full automatic, your camera will control the ISO. Now, in some cameras, you just have one ISO setting, that's it. However, in others like this Fuji X-T4, you can actually set different ISO settings and then change them as you see fit. Now, to backtrack a little, what is custom ISO? Effectively, you're saying to the camera, right, this is the base ISO or the lowest ISO that you would go to. This is the highest ISO you would go to. And this is the minimum shutter speed that I want you to use. And then the camera will stay within those parameters. So if you only want the ISO to be maxed out at 3200, you can. If you only want the camera to use shutter speeds of one over 100 and above, you can. So by having multiple ISO memory banks, so to speak, you can have one ISO setting for daytime, one for nighttime, and one for a special situation. So this just gives you a lot more control as to how your camera exposes and operates when you're in a setting such as aperture priority. The next feature that I find invaluable is the ability to either lock focus, exposure, or both of them on the same button. Let's start with exposure. Honestly, I think every camera has an AEL or auto exposure lock button. If your camera doesn't have it, I'm sure there's a way to get it to lock exposure. Basically, you point your camera at a certain subject or a certain view, press and hold auto exposure lock, and then when you recompose, then the exposure will not change when you take a photo. So this is fantastic for, let's say, getting an exposure from a brighter part of the scene and then the recomposing to get a slightly different look on a different part of the scene. Also, this is useful when you want to lock in that exposure and you don't want it to change as people or other objects are walking in and out of the frame. Next, we have focus lock. And again, I think a lot of cameras will have it and it's the same thing as exposure just with focus. So you can effectively focus on a particular subject or a particular background lock that focus, recompose, put other elements in front of your lens, have people walking in and out of your frame. And when you take a photo, you know full well that the camera will not try to then refocus on something else or something that's popped into the frame. Personally, I use this all the time for having foreground elements or something that's just like, you know, in front of the lens. And finally, we have auto exposure and auto focus lock on the same button. Now, this is a feature that I know Fuji cameras come with, but I've not seen it as much in other brands. I could be wrong. Um, effectively, you just put both of those features on one button. So when you press and hold it, your exposure is locked and your focus is locked at the same time. This is actually the one that I use the most. So I will focus, I will expose for a particular point in the frame, lock everything off, and then I can change the composition without worrying about my exposure or my focus. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, I can't actually show you the highlights priority mode because for some reason, Fujifilm cameras don't have that. However, other cameras like I think Sony and Ricoh have a highlights priority mode, which I personally love and I wish it would come to Fujifilm at some point soon. Now let's backtrack a little bit. So your camera will have different auto exposure metering modes. The highlight priority mode simply means that your camera will prioritize exposing for the brightest parts of your image. So if you're going for that traditional, let's say uh, highlights and shadow, high contrast look, then the camera will expose just for the highlights. Therefore, it makes your life as a photographer much easier when it comes to getting the right exposure for that style of photography. It takes a ton of hassle out of metering for the highlights. And honestly, after using my mate's Rico and using that particular feature, going back to the Fuji without it was definitely a bit of a pain. However, there is a way around it. And for that, I just use the center weighted metering mode with the exposure lock feature. So I would simply point the camera at the part of the image that I want to expose for, make sure it's in the middle, center weighted metering mode picks it up, I lock it and recompose. Yes, it's an extra step. Yes, it's a bit of a pain, but there's definitely a way to get around it. Hopefully they can add highlight metering mode in the X-T5 or a future firmware update. All right, this is not strictly a camera feature, it's more of a lens feature, but I also think that certain camera systems tend to prefer having aperture dials, whereas others prefer more modern look with having everything on like scroll wheels and stuff like that. But from my experience, having used both systems, Honestly, once you've used an aperture ring on your lens, it's very hard to go to another brand or another lens, which doesn't have that. Obviously a very quick caveat, this only actually applies to you if you're shooting in aperture priority or in manual. If you're shooting in shutter priority or you always have aperture on auto, then you can probably disregard this. Now, for most of us, the aperture is the single most creative control that we have on the camera. It really has the biggest influence, in my opinion, on the end result. So you can control what the viewer would look at, what they won't look at, what's in focus and what's out of focus, all with that one dial. Not to mention that it's also probably the quickest way to control how much light is coming in and out of your camera. By having the aperture dial on the lens with clear aperture value markings, you save yourself so much time and headache. First of all, you always know what aperture value you're in just by looking down on your camera without having to switch it on and look at the back of the screen. Another good thing about that is you can actually change your aperture as you're walking around with the camera switched off. So let's say your camera is off, you've been shooting in the sun, you're F8, you walk into somewhere that's let's say a bit darker, you can just quickly change it to F1.4 without even switching the camera on. So when you do see an opportunity and you quickly wanna take a photo, you don't switch the camera on, then realize you're F8, then faff around, and miss the shot. And finally, having it on the lens means it's very quick to either close the aperture down or open it up if the situation changes very quickly rather than just doing like constant scrolling on the thumb dial. Okay, that's all for today's video. Before I leave, I wanna ask you a question. What camera features have you found the most useful? Is it the headline grabbing ones like your megapixels and your frames per second? Or is it something that I've not even mentioned, something that's buried deep in the menu that for you is absolutely invaluable, but for most people, they're just not aware that this feature even exists. If you have something like that, if, or if there's something that you use all the time, please write it down in the comments below. It'll be great to hear what you use the most and also share it with everyone else. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you ever so much for watching. Next video will be coming to you from Germany. More on that later. Uh, but for now, thank you. Have a good day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.